What's up everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Cosmic Legions Book 1 Havalkatar release Oleg Thygar. This is the Grave Ring version. As we talked about previously, there is another version of Oleg Thygar that got released in the same wave. This is the Havalkatar version where he gets introduced into the prison. And then this that we're taking a look at right now is the Grave Ring version, which I'll talk about in a second here. If you're interested, I also have a review up on my channel of the Havalkatar version. Go ahead and after you finish this video, take a look at that one if you haven't already seen it. Focusing on the Grave Ring version of Oleg Thygar here, this is a version of Oleg Thygar that has been moved to the uh, bottommost ring of cells in the Havalkatar space prison, which is called the Grave Ring. Basically, all the prisoners in the Grave Ring get forced to fight in a Colosseum type deathmatch. Uh, and this is Oleg Thygar as he's been a competitor for a little while and he's kind of uh, awakening and coming into his own here. Appearance wise, I do want to kind of point out some differences, obviously, between these two. Uh, there is, I mean, aside from the fact that, like, one's shirtless and the other has actual armor on. Uh, but if we take a look at the original Oleg Thygar here, he, Oleg Thygar has kind of like a, a gold medallion on his forehead. And uh, all of his, um, like, little things, uh, little protrusions are, are slicked back. Uh, this one, he's got sort of an awakened, like, third eye, fourth, fifth eye however many you want to call those. Uh, he's got like this uh, thing coming out here, no more gold medallion on his forehead. Uh, he's also got these which are coming up and kind of making like a little halo, a little circle around his head. Uh, the tips of his little protrusions or like a little antenna are starting to turn purple. So there's definitely some changes between this Oleg Thygar and the previous. This Oleg Thygar, because he doesn't have any um, armor on uh, his upper body or anything like that, we really, really get to see like the cool detail on his body. Look at the awesome paint on the highlights here, highlighting these specific ridges over the ones in the middle. Uh, the blue is just a fantastic deep blue color. I really just love the direction that they went here. I love the purple highlights on this guy, little purple highlights on these like little fins right here. White highlights are awesome. Um, honestly, I, it's just harder and harder to find figures at this price point that have paint this detailed. And so I, I really do appreciate that. Um, a great paint and a great sculpt can make a figure just really stand out, and Oleg Thygar stands out. Both versions, honestly. Taking a look at articulation here, Oleg Thygar is pretty similar to his armored counterpart. Uh, he gets maybe maybe a little more lift on his shoulder here, but it's, it's pretty negligible, the difference. Um, they both can go at least hit that 90 degree mark. Uh, and then, let's see, we got a bicep, 90 degrees here as well. 90 degrees on a character like this, I feel like you can't really complain. Uh, there's, would I like double joints? Yeah. Um, do the single joints seem to work for this guy? Yeah. Taking a look at the head, um, the head moves even more than the previous head on the other Oleg Thygar, mostly because he doesn't have anything restricting his neck area here. Uh, there is no neck articulation aside from this head joint, uh, and so you can spin the head all the way around basically. Um, no problems looking left, no problems looking right, no problems looking a little bit up. Down is pretty decent as well. Uh, and then pretty okay tilt. Oh, sorry, let's get that in focus. Pretty okay tilt here. I really feel like you can have him looking in any direction that you really want him to be. Hands are a little bit impeded by the, not a ton, but they're a little bit impeded by the uh, little bracers that he has here. Uh, and they have the same gimmick that I talked about with the other Oleg Thygar. I'll talk about those on these hands as well because they have the same one. Um, he does not have any kind of diaphragm articulation. Uh, so all of his up and down back motion is going to be on just his uh, hip here. He's got the hip swivel. Um, but it's a little restricted by the rubber pieces. I'm kind of surprised because I feel like the other... Oleg Thygar maybe had a little bit more motion. Um, I mean, you can get a little bit of forward, and you can get a little bit of back. I don't know how forward you necessarily would want this guy to go, so um, I'm, I don't really have any problems there. These, as uh, last time, are soft plastic. In fact, the bottom legs, with the exception of the feet, are the exact same as on the other Oleg Thygar. Um, so we can kick all the way forward. Uh, we can get pretty decently back, but this little butt piece stops us. And then we can do about a 90 degree on the knees. 
you know, the knees swivel as well. Don't know if I pointed to that out on the last one. Um, but these single joints, man, they're looking, I just really like appreciate that you just really can't see the joints at all unless you hit the, the back of these guys. Like even fully bent, you just, you just can't really see that joint. That's nice. Uh, feet, he's got his grippers out. So I do kind of wish maybe he came with some extra feet. Whenever I see characters that have like these like long grabby toes, I'm like, <laughs> I want something like Frieza's feet in Dragon Ball where like they can be like on a rock and they can be gripped on the rock. But that's just uh, my my own little thing. <laughs> uh, they go really far forward. They go really far back. And as with the other releases in this wave so far, the ankle rocker is awesome. Again, uh, just like with the other Oleg Thigar, no problem putting him into any kind of standing position or any kind of like down low position because those legs are going to accommodate. Articulation on this guy is pretty satisfying. He does come with a good amount of accessories, so let's take a look at those. Uh, first off, he does have these basic gripping hands that I have him displayed with here. Um, and just like the other Oleg Thigar release, he has hands two sets of each of several hands. So he has two sets of gripping hands. Um, they're the exact same gripping hands. It's just one has a hinge that goes up and down. So this hand will articulate up and down, you know. And then he's got another set of identical gripping hands where the hinge articulates uh, side to side. So this one will go more in a side to side motion. Um, so if you need him to hold a staff a certain way or need him to hold a weapon in a certain way, uh, you can choose between those two different variants. Uh, the same is true for his trigger finger hands. He has two sets of trigger finger hands with the exact same thing. One set that goes up and down. You can see these are the up and down. And then one set that goes side to side. Good option. Honestly, just, just a good option to have. Uh, and then he does come with an extra set of just kind of open pose hands. These don't have an option. These just go up and down. Um, and so you can uh, swap these out if you want to. The reason I believe that he has like these is because this version of Oleg Thigar, rather than coming with a bunch of weapons and accessories and stuff like that, um, he comes with more of a, like a monk build or like a, like a melee fighter. Probably don't want to give like prisoners guns, I guess. He does have the, uh, peg holes or the portholes that I talked about in the previous review, but he doesn't come with those little wrist cannons. What he does come with is, oh, sorry. He comes with another transmission piece. And like I said, you can swap these out with different ones. Like different characters come with different ones. The other Oleg Thigar comes with this one. That's like a message from like someone. Um, and then other releases come with other uh, different things. They're kind of color-coded for different people, but who cares? You know, you can do what you want. <laughs> this one looks to be like uh, maybe a representation of the ship. Maybe the ship that they're on. Maybe it's Uh Maybe he's like got plans for the ship and he's going to break out. Um, but I think that these are really cool accessories. And then we have his weapons. Uh, we have a full staff here. Awesome staff. Uh, really cool, like little detailed ball at the end. Uh, it's also got like a really awesome paint job. I'm trying to uh, get it to focus here. That makes it look like it's like um, oxidized like copper or bronze. And that's really cool to me. You know, it makes it look like it's old, like it's being used, that it's rusting, it's oxidizing. Uh, and then he's got another staff that is almost identical to this one. There are some small changes. Mostly there's no ball on the end. Uh, and the end down here is uh, also missing. And that is definitely on purpose because his third weapon is a mace or a flail, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's basically uh, the ball from the first staff that's been taken off. And I believe the end piece as well. Oh, wait. The end piece of that same staff. And uh, it's just a ball and chain. And so you can have that, you can stick that in his hands. Uh, you can, I love chains and stuff like this. 
Um, they just look really cool as like weapons on these kinds of guys. Chains just end up looking so dynamic. And the chain is actually like weathered in the same way as everything else. So it has that kind of like patina on it. And this is what I was talking about with the hands. Uh, this hand, if you wanted to have like a staff in this hand, which this hand is one that swivels, uh, that goes up and down, you, that's fine, but it limits like the poses that you can have with it, you know? I like something like that. I don't know, it's kind of just like one of my go-to things, I guess. But if you put it in this hand that has the the side-to-side -side rocking motion rather than the up and down, then when you put it behind him, it's just, and it, the effect is small, but you know, it's enough that when a toy company does it, like, I care. Like, that's great. It makes me feel like somebody was thinking about uh, how I actually wanted to, like, interact with this toy or with this figure. So, dude looks really cool. Like I said, he's got more of, like, a monk build than than uh, the other Oleg Thigar. One thing that I also wanted to point out, and this is not necessarily, like, advertised or anything like that, but because these two figures are basically the same, and Mythic Legions and Cosmic Legions are kind of all about the ability to, like, swap pieces between other things, you can definitely just pop your head off your old Oleg Thigar, or the other one, and swap it out here. And now you've got, like, Oleg Thigar without his awakened form, but he's still in, like, the grave mind sort of thing. Uh, what's also really cool is, like, that's not all you can really swap out. You can pop out, like, the arms and the feet if you want, and you can have just kind of mix and match between the two. Uh, like, here, I mean... Kind of looks like he's putting one of the bear arms on the other Oleg Thigar. Makes it look like maybe he's, like, damaged an arm. Or maybe he's, like, ready for battle. Maybe he's uh, just not finished putting on his suit. Uh, same goes for this guy, man. Swap out some arms there. Maybe you want to have both arms. Give him, like, a Jax look from Mortal Kombat. Where he's got, like, two mechanical-looking arms. But his chest is bare. Honestly, there's, there's a little bit of... I really appreciate the fact that there's some interchangeability here so that you can really customize these guys and you can make them look how you want them to look. All right, now for some size comparisons. Let's go ahead and just like last time, pull out the rage, reigning champion, Kragnar. Again, absolute, oh, let's pull this up a little bit. Absolutely huge. Really just towers over everybody here. Uh, we'll put the other Oleg Thigar right next to this first one to the new one. Like I mentioned previously, I do have a review for this other version of Oleg Thigar up on my channel right now. Uh, go on over there if you haven't taken a look at that one and check that one out as well. He's got some really cool features and some really uh, interesting accessories. Throw in a Monkey King for fun. Again, Mythic Legion's uh, basically the same size as um, Oleg Thigar here. Saruya-chan from the Melancholy of Heart. This is Mia. Uh, Figma. Maybe I'll put her a little bit more to the side so you can see a better size comparison. SH Figure Arts Denji, Chainsaw Man, a Mezco 112 Collective, a Mezco 112 Collective, um, kind of basic Gomez body, Black Skull Death Brigade. And that about covers it for this review. Like I said with the first Oleg Thigar, I think that these are both fantastic releases. And if you're kind of on the fence with picking up some of the characters with this wave, and maybe Oleg Thigar is one of the ones that you're on the fence about, I definitely recommend picking up at least one. Which one would I pick? I'd personally pick the armored one. I think he's just really cool, man. And the guns. and But maybe, uh, maybe you've already bought like all the cannon fodder, and you've got like all these other guys with the same guns from the same wave. This other Oleg Thigar... He's definitely worth the money as well. He's a good value. He's got some cool weapons. He's got some cool accessories. And I definitely recommend checking him out. You guys have a good one.